Welcome to another PLC presentation. This presentation is going to be on navigating RS Logics 500. That is to say, using RS Logics 500 to develop programs, monitor programs, troubleshoot programs, save, upload, download, backup, everything that you can do with RS Logics 500. Now this particular presentation is going to be at a basics level. We will also do another one with the same title, but the level will be advanced. This one we're going to go through just the basic stuff, enough to get you going. Then once you've got a few programs under your belt and some hours using RS Logics 500 at a basics level, then you can come back and watch the more advanced presentation. This presentation is on navigating RS Logics. 500, but there are actually four different versions of RS Logics 500. When we get into the actual presentation, if you look up at the top of the screen, you'll see that we're using RS Logics 500 Pro. RS Logics 500 Pro is the most expensive version of RS Logics 500, and it has some really neat features. Features that, if you are working in a manufacturing facility, would come in real handy, like Logic Trace. However, it's a very expensive. Now, RS Logics 500 Pro programs all of the R, all the Slick 500s and all the MicroLogix products. There's also an RS Logics 500, and some people refer to it as RS Logics 500 Standard. It also programs all the Slick 500 products as well as all the MicroLogix, but it doesn't have some of the high-end features. The version that we use most often is RS Logix Micro Starter. It doesn't say RS Logix 500 because it does not program Slick 500s, but it does program all of the MicroLogix. The MicroLogix 1000, 1100, 1200, 1400, and 1500. And as you probably remember from other presentations, the very first MicroLogix was the 1000. And then sometime later, the MicroLogix 1200 was introduced, and then finally the MicroLogix 1500. Those three MicroLogix did not support online programming. Online programming allows you to actually edit your code online, go through several steps to test and assemble it, and do that all right online but the 1000, the 1200, and the 1500 do not support that. If you want to make changes, you have to save, go offline, make your changes, download, go back to the run mode. Then along came the MicroLogix 1100, which had a built-in HMI on the front of it, a small LCD screen, a built-in Ethernet port, and it also supported online programming. So the MicroLogix 1100 is really a very nice controller. And then a couple years later, they introduced the MicroLogix 1400. The MicroLogix 1400 has everything that the 1100 has, plus a lot more. Now, it does cost two, $300 more than an 1100, but it's well worth it. If I was going to invest in something other than a 1000 and buy the software I needed to program it, I would buy the 1400. 1100 is okay, but I would go with the 1400. Now, the version that we talk about that's pro gratis from Rockwell Automation is RS Logic's Micro Starter Lite. Micro Starter programs all of the Micro Logics. Micro Starter is like a few of those processors. The Micro Starter Lite only supports the Micro Logics 1000 and 1100. So if you decide to purchase a 1200, you know, a 1200, 1400 or 1500, you will have to purchase at least RS Logic's Micro Starter. If you're building a career in this field, uh, spending a few hundred bucks is not a bad idea. I've spent tens of thousands out of my own pocket on books and hardware, software, you name it. We're going to begin with RS Logic's 500 already open. Now there are several ways you could have opened RS Logics 500. You could do it from a menu. 
your start menu or you can do it from a shortcut on your desktop. It really doesn't matter how you get it open as long as you get it open and we assume that you know how to open ArsLogix 500. Okay, this is starter level navigation. First thing I want to look at is the top menus without a project open. See there's no project open now so when we look at the menus our choices are limited in context with whether or not there is a project open. You have new in other words, create a new project or open an existing project. Down here you have the most recent projects that you worked on. You wouldn't be opening a project yet because you haven't created any yet. So we'll just go to new and we're going to give it a name and we'll call it my PLC for lack of a better name. And of course we need to pick a processor and if you're using the complete PLC Learn Series set of manuals during the lab projects, then MicroLogix 1000 would be the processor that you picked. Unless you purchased an 1100 or you're using 500 Emulate and you could pick any of the 1100s or 1000s. But we're going to pick the 1000. Say OK and voila, there it is. There's our project. If we go to the next button, you see the choices there? Let's go back and close this project. So we can look at the rest of the menu choices without a project open. So new and open are the only two relevant to you right now. View these are your toolbar. The structure, toolbar structure that I have right here is of my choosing. Actually, I use a little bit wider screen so I can stretch out RSLogix 500 and spread out the toolbars horizontally. But what you're looking at right here is probably the most common layout for your toolbars. To show you what I mean, I'm going to turn them off uncheck them. See this is the only one that's still there and that's logic trace. Interesting that it does not show up here but if you go to toolbars you can uncheck it there. Now all you have is the top menu, the main menu. And you can do quite a few things from here but let's let's put our tool, toolbars back in. Here's our toolbar, standard, results, online, tab, instruction bar, instruction palette, add-ins, and visual basic. Now notice that none of these are ellipses, meaning they don't have three dots after the text. So this is an ellipse, means it means that there's more. So we'll click on that, and I'm going to put the toolbars back in. So as I click on them, you see they pop up there. That's your main toolbar. That's an important one. It's got save it's got open, it's got your search window, uh, undo, redo, search, verify project, and then these are what I call the geezer buttons. Make it bigger, make it smaller, and then probably tab instru or instruction set help. So we don't want Visual Basic, we don't want add-in, but we do want the online toolbar, and we want Slick 500 instructions. and we don't want logic trace. Now we'll go back to view and pick online. So I wanted the main toolbar in there first. So if you want to see that again, because I kind of jumped around there. View, we go to standard first to get it on top in the corner. Then we could go to online then we want tab instruction bar. Okay, those are the ones that we definitely want. That's under view. Basically the view, the only thing that you can view right now is the menu area. Comms, system comms, who active, go online, go online and upload. Well, you can do all four of those from here right now with no project open. But since we're creating a project from scratch, you wouldn't do any of those yet. So we're going to skip those and save those for the more advanced section. Go to Tools 
and there's really nothing there that we want to play with right now. We're going to save all this for the for the advanced level. For instance, options. That takes a lot of explanation to explain all those options. So then we go to window. There's nothing to do there because there's nothing to arrange. We'll show you that again when we have a project open. And then of course help. You go to contents and it popped up outside of your view so I'll bring it over so you can see. You, it's a typical help function. You have an index that's in alphanumeric order. You have favorites which you haven't created any yet so you have no favorites. Then you have search. So you can type in something and click list topics and it'll list all the topics based on that search criteria. So let's close that. So we were doing help, contents instruction help. That one's probably a pretty good one for you to see as a beginner. I'll bring it into view here for you. And then I'll move it up just a little bit because you don't need to see the title bar. If you look here, these are all of the instructions, the entire instruction set for RSLogix 500. See, RSLogix 500 instruction set help. However, not all of these instructions are supported in the MicroLogix 1000. For instance, let's go grab this one. That is a string extract. That's an ASCII instruction. You see over here, it is supported for the SLIC 503 operating system 301 and 302, the 504, 505, MicroLogix 1200, 1500, and 1400. Now you'll find the 1400, which I did mention in an earlier presentation, is the coup de grace, the piece de resistance for the MicroLogix family. It does everything. I really think it's the most versatile and the easiest to use. Uh, instruction help, and of course you can go back and we'll pick something like COP. Copy file. See, and here's a complete it shows a picture of it, gives some examples. All SLC and MicroLogix processors. So here it gives you a nice help text description of how to use that instruction. And it also shows related topics at the bottom. So uh, this is a good thing for you to see. When you're starting out writing basic code, the instruction set help is a good thing to have. And of course that's found under help and there's copy protection we don't care about that right now user application help you have to create that in other words you can create special documents that connotate or rather that describe certain things that you're doing with this program and you can actually create an HTML HTML document with links on it that go to manuals for all the hardware you're going to use in this project but Again, that's an advanced subject. So as release notes, if I click Rockwell Automation on the web, I can go directly to their website to these four areas. And then of course the last one about RSLogix 500, this tells you that uh, it's a version nine, coordinated product release nine, and it's got some other information in there that is neither here nor there. But if someone asks you what version do you have, you go to about RS Links 500. That basically covers the main menu with no project open. Now let's go back and new and we'll name it my PLC and we'll go down and we'll pick a MicroLogix 1000 and there you have your project again. We gave it a project name now the menu area up here, we've kind of discussed that a little, but we're going to save that for later. Right now, I want to discuss the project view right here. The project view is basically the filing cabinet for all of your files. You could say that you could rename this my filing cabinet, and here's your help files, and the help files, by the way, if you click on one, it's going to come up with let me drag it over there. See contents. Instruction help. 
So every time I open this up, it opens it up in another area of the screen where I'm not screen capturing. But let's collapse this. So here's your help files. Here are your controller files, controller properties, processor status, I.O. configuration, channel configuration. So these are more or less hardware files. Then here are your program files. And if we go down a little bit further, here are your data files. Now your program files are viewed over here. You see it says ladder 2 main program. If I double click on one of these, like ladder 5, now you see it says ladder 5 STI initialize. And down here I have tabs. Now we don't have any material in these ladder files, so there's nothing here to see. But if I had, I could open them up by double clicking on them and then I could switch to what ladder file I wanted to view just by selecting on the tabs. Now if I want to get rid of one, I can remove or I can go back to main program and say remove others and that gets rid of all the rest of them. This is your program file viewing area and this is your project viewing area. So these are all of the folders program files and data files mainly. Now program files display over here Pro or data files actually they pop up and you can drag them over here if you want. Now notice that I'm dragging it and it disappears behind the menu area and if I were to click I'm going to click right now here where my cursor is watch what happens it disappeared that's because this one came to the front now that other one is still back there, see? Yeah, I didn't really want to do that. Well, um, well this is a good thing for you to see. Now, I, I have this now where I don't want it, and I could pull it up here and adjust it into place, but let's say I'm lazy. So I go to Window, Arrange, Default Project, and click OK. Now, I want that output file again out here, so I double click on here on the output, Bring it over here, double click on the input. Now if I want these to stay in view, I go to the upper left hand corner, left click and then on top. Left click, on top. Now they're not going to disappear when I switch focus between the other views for this project. They're going to stay right on top. This is your ladder view area and these are your data table view areas. You can bring them up and if you lock them on top, you can take them all the way off to the side. So it's quite versatile when you have them on top. We'll just leave them like this for now. If you want to configure your I.O., which if you watched the second video in the basics series, that was I.O. and channel configuration, you already know how to do that. So we'll, we'll do a little bit here because I wanted this to be a standalone presentation. So let's go to channel configuration first. And remember this is a 1000 so all you can change is the baud rate for that single RS-232 port and there is no I.O. configuration for this Micrologix 1000. So even though these two are shown here, uh, only the channel configuration allows you to change the baud rate. Typically you change it to 19.2 and then when you go to download whatever your processor is it comes from the factory 9600 so when you go to download you know you configured your RS Lynx driver to match the processor so RS Lynx is configured in 9600 when you go to download it's going to download it at 9600 but when the program gets down there the processor is going to send back a complaint and, and it's going to say hey you're downloading a baud rate that's different than the baud rate that this project is set for. Which do you want me to use? Well typically I would say use what I download. In other words overwrite what's in the processor then go back to RS Links, reconfigure, auto configure your driver. It's going to discover 19.2, 19,200 baud rate and then you can go back online and you're good. So there's a number of different ways you can waltz to the end of the dance with RS links. Because this is a 1000 we really don't have any IO configuration or channel configuration. 
We also don't have any ability to expand the program files. See, new is grayed out. Go to data files, new is grayed out. So this is your default form for this Micrologix 1000. You have ladder 2 through ladder 16, which is 16 is really a debug file. And then for data files, you have, of course, your output and input files, then status, which is fixed, and then binary, timer, counter, control, and integer. If I open up binary, see it's already expanded out to 32 words, 0 through 31. But these files are already expanded out to their maximum. So you only have 40 timers. And you have 32 counters. You have 16 control data structures. And you have 105 integer registers. Now it says N7104, but remember we start at 0. So 0 through 104 is 105. That's it. That's all you've got to work with. If you need more than that, Put your PLC back in the box. Hopefully you didn't scratch it and you haven't done anything with it yet or you haven't even taken it out of the box. Take it back to your Allen Bradley distributor and get either a larger Micrologix 1000 or an 1100 or 1400. Personally I would spend the money on the 1400 even though I can't use the free software then I would buy RS Logix 500 standard or whatever the least expensive version is. If you're just doing this for a hobby, don't even use a PLC. Use the emulator. There's a video on this channel, a video available out there, one that I've done. It's either on this channel or you'll find it out there. Anyway, it takes you step by step how to download software, set up the emulator, and then run PLC programs without an actual PLC. Now, I do want to remind you that Rockwell Automation moves the ProGrata software around on occasion. But there's three pieces you're interested in. MicroStarter Lite, which is a free version of RS Logix 500, RS Lynx Lite, and 500 Emulate. Those are the three that you want. If you keep looking, you'll find them. They are also available on the bonus disc that comes with the lab lecture discussion disc set for the P complete PLC learn manual. We don't sell the software. It's a bonus disk that's just information and the disk comes free with the basic lab discussion lecture set. As you can see here we pull a little switch on you. We switched from RS Logix 500 Pro to RS Logix Micro Starter. I do not actually have a license for the standard and since you're more likely to use MicroStarter or MicroStarter Lite, I decided to switch over to MicroStarter. Now this is software that you have to pay for because it does program all the MicroLogics, not just the 1100. Remember the MicroStarter Lite is pro gratis from Rockwell. Let's get back to where we were at and it was called My PLC. Now notice that this only shows the MicroLogix family. It does not show the Slick 500. So let's pick just a plain old MicroLogix 1000. And voila, there's your project. And when we last were in the RSLogix 500 Pro, we had uh, Ladder 2 open. We also had some of the database files open. I think we had the output and we had locked it on top moved it up here and we had the input file open. Now these files are fixed in size. If we were to pick a different processor uh, these files aren't necessarily fixed in the other MicroLogix because you can expand the I.O. The MicroLogix 1000 what you see is what you get. Whatever you purchase whatever fixed or embedded I.O. is on that package that's all the I.O. that you have to work with. Something like that. So we'll, that's kind of where we were at when we left the other projects. So I'm going to close those down and I'm going to create one rung 
of logic. Now, this presentation is not on programming. It's on navigating. But we want to create something so we can download and go online. So I'm going to drag a rung down, drag a truth on down, drag a energized output down. And there's several ways that you can uh, use these instructions to address memory. I could just type in the address or I can open the input file like this and drag the address over. You want to make sure you have data file selected and not force. I can drag it over and then here you see it says I1 S2 I1 output 0. So I can grab an output address and drag it over here. Or I could have just typed them in. Now this rung is still in the edit mode as you see by the ease. I would normally just verify the project if it likes it. The ease disappear and there's no errors that pop up. Now we want to download this. So the first thing that we have to do is set up RS links. So we open up RS links. It opened up out of your view so I will drag it over. There is RS links and we go to the double headed snake, configure drivers, and we pick the RS232 DF1 devices. This is the simplest driver. Any Micrologix or Slick 500, as a matter of fact, any Allen Bradley PLC that has an RS232 port on it supports this driver. And this is a point to point, no addresses to fool around with. And it supports auto config. I'll show you what I mean. So you pick that, say add new, leave the default name. Now, normally when this kind of stuff pops up, you're thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to figure out all this. Well, actually, the only thing you have to figure out is what COM port your USB adapter is plugged into. Now, if you have an older laptop or you have a tower that has an RS-232 port, it's probably COM1. In this case, this laptop does not have an RS-232 port. I'm guessing it's COM4. So I'll pick COM4. As a matter of fact, I'll just show you as best I can with this screen space how you determine that. I'm going to go out of your view and I'm going to go to Computer and right click, go to Manage. And of course, I can't drag this over into view, but you'll see in a minute I can drag this over. Then I go to Device Manager. I go down to my COM ports and you see right there, USB Serial Port COM4. Right click on Computer in your Start Menu area. Click on Manage, go to Device Manager, open up your ports and you'll see that it's whatever COM port is assigned. It could be 5, it could be 6. So we'll close that back down, we'll pick 4. So we're saying, we're telling RS links, we want you to auto configure and we want you to go to COM4, which has been assigned to that USB port. So we click on auto configure. You see it's trying all kinds of iterations until it finds something, meaning it sends out a message at all these different baud rates, air checking, configuration, stop bits, parity, etc. If it doesn't hear anything back within milliseconds, it sends out another. When it hears something back, it knows that the configuration of the message that it sent out matches what's in the processor so it says auto configuration successful. So we see it's at 9600 so I'm going to leave the driver set like this so right auto config successful click OK and you're good to go. So I'm going to close that. Now I'll close this again we don't need that. So we've written one rung of logic now we go to comms, system comms, click on our Micrologix 1000 and say download. Click on save. Yes, processors in the run mode must be switched to the remote program mode continue. When you see this message, it's asking you if it's okay if the software switches the controller over to the program mode. You can't download to the controller while it's running. So you just say yes, continue. And now you can see it's downloading the project 
to the processor. Now it's asking, do you want to change back to the run mode? We'll just say yes. Do you want to go online? Yes. Okay, now you see we're in remote run mode and we have our rung of logic. If I were to operate this switch, you see that that instruction is now true. I just flip the switch on, flip the switch off. Okay, so we, we're online and we have a program that's running. Now let me mention a few things here. The processor can also be put into the program mode. See it changes color. And you can go offline. Now if you go offline, you're offline. You're no longer connected to the processor. So we won't quite do that yet. We'll go back to the run mode. And one thing I wanted to show you was saving. So you, you see the little floppy disk symbol. It's amazing that that's hung around all these years in most software. Just means save. So if you want to save as, go to file and pick save as. Otherwise, you can just click on the floppy. Okay, give it a name if you want. Warning, data table has changed. Do you want to upload the data table values? Say yes. Okay, you just saved the program from online. Now, since this processor does not support online programming, it really doesn't, there's real no value in saving from online unless you want to save your data table. In other words, if you had a timer in there, well, we can't edit online. So we can't change anything to demonstrate. But if I were to uh, toggle this bit on with a switch, now that bit is on in memory, I 0, .0, slash 0. That bit is on and the bit O colon 0, .0, slash 0, it's also on. That means your data table values have changed. If I click it off, they've changed back. So there's really nothing to save from this type of a processor unless you had a program in here that had data that was being manipulated, integers, math, what, and things like that. In this case, saving was of no real value, so we might as well just click and go offline. We saved this, so I can click here to shut the program down. Now there's no program open. So the last thing I wanted to show you is opening an existing project. So we go to File instead of New, we go to open. Now I could just pick my PLC. It's the most recent, but we'll go to open. And now we got to find this thing. So we know we saved it in PLC professor folder. So we just go down until we get to my PLC right there. Double click on it and you're back open again. You can download from here, go online, do whatever you want. So I just wanted to end up with micro starter instead of 500 pro there's always one more thing isn't there i opened up rs logics micro starter again and went online you can see we're in the remote run mode i wanted to demonstrate something that i mentioned earlier and i have mentioned in other presentations now we know that the driver rs links driver was auto configured i think for 9600 so if we go to channel configuration, we can see here that the driver is configured at 9600. Now I'm going to show you what happens when you change this to 19.2 online. I'm going to say OK. Now remember that right now we're online. RSLogix MicroStarter is communicating with this processor through an RS Lynx driver that's set at 9600. I'm telling the processor right now that you're 19.2. Changing the baud rate of the microcontroller will immediately take effect. Comms will be lost. Change baud rate now? Yes. Okay, so it kicked us offline. Now we can't go back online with the RS Lynx driver the way it's set. So let's open up the RS Lynx driver again. Now that we have the RS Lynx open again, let's go to this driver, go to configure, see it's still set at 9600, so when we do auto configure, this time it should find 19.2, see auto configuration successful, 
19.2. Now we click OK. We could close down RS links and now we can go back online. System comms, online. Save changes, yes. After all, we did change the baud rate and that is part of the configuration. So see, now we're back online. We're back online with RS Logic's micro starter and my PLC. That concludes the basic level presentation on navigating RS Logix 500. At the time that I posted this video, I don't have the advanced level developed yet and recorded, but it will be coming soon.